Hello buddy, we'll be doing the showcase of the blade. A lot of people were asking me what engravings, what tripods, uh, rotation and overall to make one of these. So today is the day. In terms of uh, stats, gems, tripods, what to prioritize on so your blade doesn't feel like poop, uh, what to go for. I'm playing remaining now. And uh, let's answer the eternal question. Well, what's better, Surge or Remaining? Both deal the same amount of the damage in Trixion, which makes and Surge is a bit harder to deliver, which makes Remaining will have, on average, higher DPS on the real fights. But it's way more expensive to gear up to deal that the amount of the damage. Therefore, if Blade is zero out, not a main, I would recommend playing Surge unless you really enjoy remaining when play remaining. But in terms of raw efficiency, Surge is more efficient to play as an alt than remaining. Remain and if you are playing uh, as a Lompanger, as low level character, uh, up until 1370, Surge will feel better. Remaining before 1370 doesn't play well, doesn't feel good without wealth runes, without tripods, and without uh, engravings. You need at least supercharge free remaining one for the build to even operate and it doesn't even feel good because you'll be missing the spec which allows you to fill your gauge really fast uh, to have a proper rotation I'll showcase later on so in terms of stats what do we prioritize on necklace uh, try to focus when you have a crit spec necklace try to go for as high spec as you can crit is not as important so if you see a green quality neck but it has high spec low crit it's actually a very valuable item if you can snipe it for a cheap. So my neck is not the example of that, but right now I changed a bit my engravings because I managed to cut 9-7 rock. Uh, so it's a bit unoptimal. But it is what it is. I'm, I, uh, I can't really spend much more on the, the character for now. Uh, so focus on the high spec. Uh, don't bother too much to worry about crit on necklace. It's a secondary stat. In terms of sets, which sets to build? If your, if your blade is an alt, let's say you park a blade at 13 for 30, should I push to 14.45 to get the uh, entropy set or should I stay at 14.30 and just craft beast power? Beast power will be stronger for you than entropy. Uh, one, it's easier to play with. Two, you don't rely on the back attacks that much. Three, if you play remaining, beast power also scales your moonlight sonic. Which is really nice, where Entropy uh, partially doesn't work with Moonlight because Moonlight doesn't have a nader front or back attack, which uh, gets scaled only partially. Uh, where So if you see here crit damage 17%, the only part to apply that, that's applied to Moonlight is 7%, and the 55 is only applied if you do back attack, um, but that doesn't work with Moonlight. So in terms of set, if you play Alt Blade, 1430, craft beast power full set. Until Vikas, you can use 4 piece beast power. This is where the big spike comes from. And use 2 piece Argos. And uh, you use beast, uh, you use Argos gloves and Argos shoulders. Rest beast power. Yeah? In terms of engravings, well, what to go for? Because there is a lot of questions. Do I go Curse Doll? Do I go Adrenaline? Uh, for the, our current content, Adrenaline will be better because you can up because the fights, uh, the bosses don't have that much phasing, so it's easier to upkeep uh, three, uh, six stacks of Adrenaline, which will give you bigger DPS boost on the over the board. But Kerstol becomes a bit better later on because there is a bigger downtime between the encounters, and it makes a bit annoying to upkeep Adrenaline because you need to use your your uh, party synergy, which is uh, Spin Cutter. And when you don't have to apply to the boss, it again it's annoying. My recommendation is if you're if you're playing a main blade, you're going for 1460, 1475 for the clown for Belshazzar, you don't want to change your accessories and you want to have an easier time. Uh, I would recommend to go for Curse Doll over Adrenaline. I'm playing level 1 remaining level 3 adrenaline because again I got the rock. Normally, I would recommend you to do, instead of Adrenaline, use Curse Doll and use level 3 uh, remaining energy because it will be cheaper for you to use class engraving plus 12 if you manage to get on it because remaining energy is quite cheap of a book getting comparison to like Grudge, Curse Doll from the market uh, or even Adrenaline. So it's cheaper option and it's equally good. Yeah. 
in terms of gems, what's the priority on the... So the most important gem is a Malstorm cooldown. This allows you, this smoothens your rotation. And uh, getting the cooldown on this level 10, uh, like in the, if you are going for long-term investment, would be your priority. Not damage gem, but cooldown gem. Uh, priority on the blade. So try to get as high as you can milestorm cooldown, level 9, level 7, level 8. Try to upgrade that over time. Uh, in terms of damage gems, what's the priority? The top priority is search, because keep in mind, your one rotation includes one search, one blitz rush, one absorber, one moon, not even one moonlight. You use moonlight every second rotation and one void strike. Therefore, uh, your highest DPS skill is search. So search will be the top priority for the gems. Next one is Blitz Rush in terms of damage priority. Then uh, Soul Absorber. Yeah. Then Void Strike. Um, Moonlight has the worst scaling the damage once you get Entropy set. If you don't, if you're gonna be using Beast Power set, Moonlight deals uh, very similar damage to Void uh, Void Strike. Uh, so the priority between those two is uh, similar. You get either one you get your hands on first. If you use Entropy set, then Void Strike has higher priority because it has back attack, attack. Yeah, and Moonlight does it, which makes it lesser of a priority. Uh, getting cooldown gems on those respectively is also important. In terms of what uh, last gem, do I get Dark Axel cooldown, do I get Spin Cutter cooldown, or do I uh, use Earth Cleaver cooldown as your 11th gem because this is the flex slot? I personally recommend uh, Spin Cutter. Especially if you want to run Adrenaline, getting the Spin Cutter uh, more often will allow you to upkeep your attacks easier. And even if you don't run it, this is your repositioning tool, this is your uh, party synergy tool, this is extreme, and this uh, also uses as a filler, is a gauge filler. So this has so many, so much utility and uh, skills like Axel, you use uh, only in the rare cases where you need to reposition behind the boss to deliver the search or continue the back attack so you're not gonna be spamming it you know the opposition to the pin cutter the same goes with the counter f cleaver on the fights where you need to keep it as a counter you're not gonna be spamming it therefore you don't need cooldown reduction on it. so moving on to the tripods what's the most important tripods the most important tripod for remaining and search this is the this is gonna be focused more on the remaining the search one we have the separate video uh, is the orb control of the milestorm this allows you to fill the gauge faster and that's why in, like tr in, the tripods are very important uh, on the remaining energy because it scales uh, very well and the second uh, the most important is void strike orb control those two gives you a way better scaling uh, with the tripod the gauge generator yeah so once you get obtain those two, uh, get Dark Order, and then you can start working on your uh, damage tripods. So in terms of priority, uh, Blitz Rush, uh, this is the least important. The most important is Charge Enhancement, Shadow Rush. Vital, vital high hit point is the least one. Then Soul Absorber, Beast of Darkness Half are the most important. Swift Fingers is the least important. Spin cutter, uh, quick prep is uh, depends on your playstyle, but it's, uh, for me it's quite important. Uh, level four uh, plus three is completely enough for me right now. I'm not going overboard to get to plus uh, four on it. Uh, and moonlight, uh, moonlight is the priority after absorber, which is fist of darkness. Uh, all of these three are equally important, and again. Here, the Dark Explosion and Fist of Darkness equally important as Moonlight does. Depending again if you run Beast Power set, if your blade is an alt, or if you see main and you are going higher, if you use Entropy, then those are import more important, and then does. Yeah. Uh, I have one slot, but I didn't even bother. Uh, you're gonna be running last two tripods, you're gonna be using on the Earth Cleaver for DPS. I believe that highest DPS scaling has the Earth Explosion and Weak Boy Detection, but to be honest, whatever you're gonna drop, just use. Don't bother buying this, it's waste of pinions, it's a counter skill, it's not a DPS skill, it's not. It's gonna be very marginal amount of the damage. Uh, also, the least important but also useful is Swift Fingers on the Axel, just faster, yeah? 
Okay, so in terms of uh, runes now, what runes do we use and why? So, we use Purple Wolf on Void Strike. Why, why not uh, Orange one? Because Absorber has the highest base gauge uh, gain in, from all your tools. Therefore, uh, you want to scale the uh, Legendary Wolf Rune with the Absorber. The reason why, uh, when you test in the Trixion, they're gonna do the same, but the thing is, it has orb control. And uh, Wealth Rune is additive, with, not multiplicative, with the um, orb control. Therefore, it's just Void Strike has a worse baseline of the gauge uh, um, generation. Therefore, we use only purple, not uh, legendary on it. Yeah? And then, uh, M MP consumption, we're gonna have a mana problems. You need to run MP uh, focus unless you're gonna run permanent food and with support you can use bleed on the milestorm instead of the focus. But I run into mana problems, I do the carry runs and I need uh, I need to reduce mana on it. Yeah. Uh, moonlight, we want to accelerate it. I'm uh, I'm often often breaking my moonlight. The second I have ready like bleed rush absorber, I'm gonna stop my moonlight mid cast to do another uh, skill to fast to speed up my rotation. Therefore, we want to make it faster, that's why uh, cast speed. Also, there is confusion, because there is su uh, such thing as an attack speed cap. You can get maximum of the attack speed 140%. And Blade, if you run a remaining, if you play have a support with the yearning set in the future, you have a remaining buff and you have the milestorm, you're gonna reach attack speed cap. But, cast speed uh, goes beyond that. So you can have you can reach attack speed cap, and on top of that you can have a cast speed, which will increase further the cast uh, the cast speed of the skill. Blitz rush is the do you want to get this is your highest DPS skill? Also, it's one of the slower ones, so you want to accelerate it the fastest. That's why legendary gale went on the blitz rush. Same same. Uh, some people run rage on the spin cutter. Again, rage makes no sense because you go, we're gonna be capped on movement speed and we're gonna be capped on attack speed, and therefore it's just. Uh, it doesn't do anything for us. It's movement speed and attack speed. And we already know that we are capped on them. Therefore, Gale Wind better. Because it's a, it goes beyond the scaling. Yeah? Protection on Axel. Uh, once you get um, better at playing Blade, you're gonna be utilizing Axel to, uh, to min-max your DPS. You're gonna uh, be um, tanking sent certain AoE patterns. Or like whenever boss is finishing AoE pattern, let's say Valtan is finishing his spin, you'll be able to utilize your Axel to be already ready to back attack him. And by utilizing protection of this, you won't be losing HP while repositioning when uh, boss is, for, uh, for example, spinning. Or when you are you uh, using the Axel as a just CC immunity, a push immunity, yeah? Because we are using tenacity on it. So whenever boss is doing like, let's say, Wolf in the... Uh, gate one, he's doing the bombs uh, on the ground that knock you up. Uh, we can uh, min max, like we can do damage, but you won't have time to move away and you don't want to waste space. You'll use Axel, so you won't take damage from the mechanic, but uh, you'll get the and um, because protection will uh, save you the HP and you'll have a push immunity from the tenacity. Uh, we have very low stagger. No, we have mediocre stagger. We don't have very, very low. This helps us with the stagger. Uh, Earth Cleaver is your counter and is your uh, destruction and it's your stagger. It's medium. We increase it. There is nothing better. You can put it. You can put bleed, here, but overwhelm is uh, better for the overall rates uh, experience. You can put bleed if you want more damage. And yeah, wealth we covered. In terms of card set, what's better? Uh, is it better to run Light of Salvation or it's better to run Lost Wind Cleave? When, when Vikas drops, or Vikas purely, it's better to run Lost Wealth because it changes your damage to Holy and she's weak to Holy. That gives us 10% more damage. But for general content, if we have, let's say, assume uh, already 18 loss, it's better than Lost Wind? Not necessarily. Now it depends what engravings do you run. If you don't run Adrenaline, it's better to and you run Entropy Set, you should be using Lost Wind, even though you have 18 LOS, because uh, your crit damage from Entropy needs more scaling from the crit chance. Unless you are playing in a group with the crit synergy like Lensmaster, Gunslinger, then you can rotate this. 
but overall you should readjust based on what content you do and with who. So in terms of uh, DPS min-maxing yet, keep in mind to use your push immunity tools whenever a boss is doing certain patterns. So what can you do to get gain push immunity? Blade has four tools uh, to gain push immunity. First is Axel, second one is Space, third is Surge, and fourth is Awakening. Those are your push immunity tools, that whenever you can min-max your damage, but let's say you don't want to get pushed off the arena, you can use those four to guarantee yourself not getting uh, knocked out, eat it from arena. You can also use uh, Paralyze immu immunity, uh, most of the blade skills has Paralyze immunity, only except like Milestorm, I think. Only Milestorm doesn't have super armor for the Paralyze immunity. Yeah, so whenever like, let's say Valtan spins and you know you don't have space, you'll get pushed out. Instead of running away, you can start casting Moonlight and you won't get pushed out. You can start casting uh, Absorber and keep holding it, you won't get pushed out. You'll get closer to the boss, therefore he won't push you away. You can utilize, you can spin cutter towards the boss, you'll get uh, paralyzed immunity, so you won't get pushed. Uh. So learning those kind of stuff is kinda important for min-maxing DPS later on, once you uh, become a master blade player. In terms of rotation, I'll showcase my standard rotation for the boss. Keep in mind, I have level 10 gems for the cooldown, and my rotation will be, and I have quite high spec. Normally, your rotation will be sl looking slightly differently, and you'll probably need to use Moonlight Sonic more often to fill up the gauge before you can use Surge. I'll be skipping Moonlight every second rotation uh, to maximize the damage. So two minute uh, DPS. The mana issue, normally you don't run into that uh, problem, but again we are in the trick zone, I didn't use the BFC engraving for the testing, it's fine though, manage. You'll need to use here Moonlight most of the time to fill the gauge on the lower level of the gear. Keep in mind. All right. So that's the that's the standard uh, rotation for the for the remaining energy that I use. <clears throat> Hope that guys uh, helped you a bit. If you have any questions, feel free to, to tune on the stream. Uh, yeah, I answer most of them unless they are dumb as fuck. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed and yeah, cheers.